We got another cheese grater. Stay tuned for the 2019 Mac Pro. All right, really quickly, this video, I want to get this out there. They just announced the Mac Pro today, the 2019. It's going to come out in the fall. So go ahead and stay tuned. I'm going to go through some specs with you and show you some designs and things like that just to get you to see it. It's an expensive device for sure. Uh, there's no doubt about it. So, you know, we'll go through it fairly quickly. I'm going to give you some basic specs. Obviously, there'll be a lot more you can go through. It comes with a great 6K monitor as well, which is super expensive as well. But definitely stay tuned. I'll show you a little bit about that as well and all the specs. So, I mean, basically, without further ado, I want to dive into this just because, you know, obviously it just came out, and I'm sure you guys want to know a little bit about it. So let's get into it. And here it is. It's kind of a new cheese grater. I'm not sure I expected it to look like this, but go ahead and let me know your thoughts on this. Do you like it or not? Oh, yeah, and it does come with a 32-inch. It doesn't come with it. It's extra. We'll get into this in a second. But it's a 6K display, 32 inches. So crazy display here. We'll talk about it in a second. Starting to grow on me, I think, the look of it anyways, but I can't tell yet. So anyways, it's, they, they deem it as having so much configurability. It's basically going to have the most so people can configure it any way they want to. So it's really made for the power user, which is really great compared to past units. And here you can see how they can take the case right off these things. So it's very easy to take the case off. You just pull the handle and then you can get right into the guts of the machine. It's basically built from an uh, all steel frame and it's got an aluminum housing that lifts off and it basically allows you a 360 degrees of full access into both sides of it. So again, it all comes down to that configurability and it is made of metal, stainless steel and aluminum. All right, this is kind of a close up of the inside of the unit on one side so you can see obviously how it's made. It's still not obviously like a PC exactly, but it is pretty clean. It's got two spots for its Radeon graphics cards or whatever graphic cards you want to put on it. It's got the RAM slots. It's got a lot of things that are exposed for you to use. So it's a lot easier than some of the prior units and, and definitely a good step forward. So here's the kicker now. It's got up to 20 cores of power. It's massive. So it's basically going to have a huge CPU power with a new Xeon processor. Those 20 cores have uh, large L2 and L3 caches and up to 64 PCI Express lanes. So it's going to add a lot of power, a lot of kick, and a huge amount of uh, cores there. Here's a quick graphic to see where the CPU lives, and this is where you're going to get all the power from. This 28 cores. Here's a good picture of the heat sink for the CPU, and it can basically cool up to 300 watts at that CPU level, which is massive. Uh, obviously has a much bigger power supply capable, so um, definitely a lot of iron in there, a lot of stuff to cool stuff down. All right, so this is a big thing too. It basically features six channels of super fast ECC memory and 12 physical DIMM slots. So that's massive. 12 DIMM slots is a ton of DIMM slots for sure. Um, as you can see in the bottom there, obviously it also has the 28, 24, 16, 12, and 8 core examples you can get in this model. But the RAM is huge. The RAM is going to be something that you can, you can put, I forget, it's like 1.5 terabytes of RAM on these systems. Alright, and here's a quick example of Autodesk Maya. They just did some examples on a 28 core. It's about 4.2 times faster than the previous uh, 12 core Mac Pro, so quite a bit faster than the previous model. All right, so this has eight PCI Express expansion slots. It basically um, has four double wide slots, three single wide slots, and one half length slot pre-configured with the Apple I.O. card. So it has twice as many slots as the previous Mac Pros. So really, again, just showing you building on its capability, it's gonna be a, a totally professional machine for professionals. All right, so this thing's gonna be a power horse and it can actually do things like 3D film assets and composing 8K scenes, which is crazy. So 8K. <laughs> and then basically it had to require something new here. So it came out with something called the Mac Pro Expansion Module or the MPX Module to help power it. All right, so it's a second connector and industry first. So the MPX module starts with an industry standard PCI Express connector. Then for the first time in the graphics card, additional PCI lanes were created to integrate Thunderbolt and provide increased capability. With up to 500 watts, the MPX module has power capacity equivalent to the entire previous generation of the Mac Pro. So again, a big change here. All right, so it's the world's most powerful graphics card also. So it's take, you know, basically it's the supports the configuration of the Radeon Pro Vega 2 Duo, so two of them, two modules, four GPUs combined to add up to 56 teraflops and 128 gigs of high bandwidth memory. So massive power host on the graphics side. And here's a quick graphic on how this MPX module is going to be cooled. Basically, it pulls the air in from the bottom and goes out the top. 
Go ahead and freeze this if you want to uh, write this down, but basically here's the Radon Pro Vega 2 Duo stats right here. So go ahead and pause this if you want to see those, but they're quite powerful. Here's the Radon Pro Vega 2, the, not the Duo, but just the single. And again, still a ton of power, but obviously nothing compared to the Duo. And then kind of the standard one is going to be the Radeon Pro 580X. And again, you can pause it here, but it's basically got 5.6 single uh, precision teraflops, so a little bit less capacity. All right, it also has introducing Apple Afterburner, so Blaze through 8K, 8K video. It's basically created to transform the workflow from film to video professionals. Afterburner allows you to you know, go straight forward from the camera to timeline and work na natively in 4 and 8K files. So a little bit difference here from the prior versions, and it's uh, looking at you know video professionals in a little bit more light. And so it can do up to three streams of 8K ProRes RAW video at 30 frames per second, up to 12 streams of 4K ProRes RAW at up to 30 frames per second, up to 16 streams of 4K ProRes 422 video at 30 frames per second. It does have uh, the security T2 chip in here as well, so it's going to be one of the more secure machines that Apple makes. So again, everyone's looking for that T2 chip for security, and this does include it, so it does not disappoint there either. Great for security. And I.O. is important, so this doesn't disappoint there as well. So it begins with four Thunderbolt 3 ports, two USB-A ports, and two 10 gigabit Ethernet ports. And uh, every MPX module that we talked about before gets more capability, connects up to 12 4K displays or up to six Pro displays XDRs from Apple. So you can't go wrong here. It's amazing with all the I.O. on this thing. So it's definitely made for, for, for the professional. All right, I'm just going to show you some stats now, and definitely, you know, you can freeze your or pause your screen at any time to go ahead and look at this. Just goes to show you that it goes from an 8-core up to a 24-core CPU, um, actually up to 28-core CPU, I'm sorry. So it does have a lot of capability on the cores and on the power of the machines, and it's going to be probably a lot of different costs, which we'll get into in a second. Memory can go from 32 gigs in the low end up to uh, 1.5 terabytes, which is crazy. The 580X uh, is going to be the low-end graphics card, and we talked about the other higher end a couple minutes ago, and the power supply is up to uh, 1.4 kilowatts so obviously a pretty powerful one it does have eight PCA Express expansion slots um, and basically it does have storage for up to four terabytes of SSD so um, obviously a lot of bays there as well we just talked about the input and output um, and it has a lot of those as well so you definitely have a lot of capability and it weighs about 40 pounds and now a drum roll for the cost of this machine drum roll please it starts at $59.99, $59.99 and goes up I'm well, well into the teens, obviously, of thousands. So is it worth it? You make the call. All right, now for the screen that goes with this. This is an amazing screen, but it's going to be expensive. We'll get into the pricing in a second here. Um, you got to see this thing to believe it, but it's basically going to be a 32-inch screen. And that 32-inch screen is going to definitely be, uh, you know, it's XDR. It's called Pro Display XDR. But it's going to come in at 6K, which is crazy. So a 6K 32-inch screen. And you can flip it all different angles, which we're going to show you in a second. It's got over 1,600 nits of brightness and a 1, 1 million to 1 contrast ratio. So it's something you've never seen or heard of before. For, but the price on this thing, which we'll get into again in a couple minutes, is going to be something that, you know, obviously most people cannot afford. All right, so here's just a picture of the way that the, the actual monitor looks from the back and the sides. So it's kind of a funky looking screen, but it kind of looks cool from the back. It's got that same grade as the actual computer. And it does have 1,000 nits up to 1,600 nits peak and 1 million to 1, which we just talked about. Super bright. 10-bit 10, uh, 10 color depth and P3 wide color gamut, uh, which is going to be something that most people want. And it does have uh, basically, uh, you know, innovation. It's basically got three different layers, which dramatically reduce blooming using advanced LED technology and light shaping. So it definitely uh, has some advanced features built into it. And it does have up to 25 times better viewing angles than the previous models. So it's built into it as well. They also did build in some advanced uh, anti-glare on the lens. So it's definitely going to have a lot less glare than some of the previous models that you've seen on these on monitors that have glass like this. So that's a new feature built into this. Here's a, just a quick example of what 6K looks like compared to 4K in the screen size. It's just amazing. Uh, you get that much more screen from 4K, which is just crazy. And then here's the back of it, which are these little, uh, you know, basically little uh, design that they have back there. But it's actually for airflow, and it looks cool too. So check that out. And then here's the hinges on it in the back, and it does fold up. And then here we go is how you can actually fold the, uh, the actual monitor up and down and left and right. The actual monitor can be detached with a magnetic connection. That's kind of cool. And then this also does come with, you can additionally get a Visa mount adapter for additional charge. 
And here's the kicker. And go ahead and pause this because uh, obviously you want to look at these statistics, but it's $49.99 for standard glass monitor and nano texture glass is $59.99. That doesn't include the computer, so a huge cost for a monitor. Um, go ahead and pause this to look at the specs, but is it worth it? I don't think so for most people, but you never know for professionals. All right, well that was it. So we have another cheese grater for sure. Uh, this time it's going to be pretty powerful. And uh, you know, obviously for power users and people that use this for their job and things like that, this is a pretty exciting uh, piece of uh, hardware coming out. So um, for the rest of us, it might be a little bit too expensive. You know, you may have to put a mortgage down on it. But uh, at least, you know, they did come out with one. And I do think it's got some capability there. Just gotta wait for the prices to come down and maybe I'll pick up a used one. You just never know. All right, guys, thanks for watching. And uh, definitely, if you can, subscribe to my channel. It's going to help me out. Um, i definitely trying to get to that 1,000 subscriber mark. So um, please help me out. And I do a couple of videos. I'm actually going to be traveling next week. So um, I might have a little bit of a hiatus, but I'll talk to you guys soon. Peace.